Welcome to another episode of Autograph Weekly, where we cover everything autograph related. This week, we're going to be covering a new breaking news topic, the Writers Guild of America strike. WGA is a union that protects American film and TV writers, and they just concluded negotiations with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. So think the big streaming companies like Netflix, HBO, Hulu, these big services, they all are in this conglomerate together, and they kind of work with the Writers Guild, the Actors Guild, and the Directors Guild to determine what the prices are, how labor works, all that kind of stuff in the film and TV industry. Basically, the Writers Guild, they just concluded negotiations and they couldn't come up with an agreement for pay. Now, you might be asking, what does this have to do with autographs and conventions and all that kind of stuff, which we usually cover on Autograph Weekly? Well, I can tell you that it does have some direct impacts on what we're going to be experiencing with autographs, whether it's a decrease in street graphers being able to have access to opportunities where actors and writers are going to be, or also with how actors are going to be able to appear at things like conventions, possibly. There's going to be some ramifications here that are going to affect the autograph hobby pretty intimately, so we're going to get into some of those details and discuss how exactly this strike is going to be affecting people, and if it goes beyond the writers to the actors guild and the directors guild who have their negotiations coming up next then they might decide to basically join forces with the writers guild and team up and try to get some action that way to get better pay for the writers and the people who are actually creating the media out there because right now the executives at these big companies netflix they are going home with millions tens of millions of dollars in salaries while the writers are just not even making ends meet they have you know, pretty low wages for what they do, and they're the ones who are generating this content and kind of like the first step in the food chain of a movie or film or TV production. So without the writers, you know, there's really nothing that can be done after that. So they're a very important cog in the wheel. Without them, nothing gets started. So they deserve to be paid for what they do, and right now they're being severely, severely underpaid. So we're going to go into how that affects the autograph hobby and what is what we can expect after that. We're going to go into how that affects the autograph hobby and what the fallout is going to be. So first off, the strike started on Tuesday. So that was May 3rd. And basically, the concessions that they wanted were not you know, too crazy. There was some stuff about protections against AI. So artificial intelligence is here. And if you were thinking about you know, the impacts of artificial intelligence, this generative AI, the writers that are out there, being something that you're going to have to worry about in the future, well, we're already seeing it come up in these negotiations, negotiations right now because you know, if the Netflix and all these other companies weren't using the technology right now for writing their scripts, then it wouldn't have come up in the discussion, right? So basically, the writers are taking a qualm with Netflix and these other companies using generative AI to actually write scripts, apparently. So that was one of the things that they were disputing, and they didn't want these companies to be able to use this technology to basically usurp the power of the writers. And not only that, but they wanted to protect it so that the machine learning couldn't be trained on writer's data already, like previous scripts. Basically how the AI works is you feed it all this information. So like, let's say I feed it every Seinfeld script ever made. If you give it all this information, then it can easily pump out a new episode of Seinfeld written in the style of what was previously made. So they're basically saying, no, we don't want you to do that because it's basically taken work that's already been done by writers and it's, uh, you know, plagiarizing. So what they're referring to this is like a plagiarism machine. So this is one of the qualms that they had. Of course, they are also the big major qualm here is that it's the gigification of the writing job. So they're basically being kind of treated like gig workers in the industry and they want basically more power and say and they want you know, better residuals for the work that they're doing. This is the money that comes in after the production has already been made. So like you get a check for whenever the TV show has been streamed, that kind of stuff. So despite the company profits for all these big streamers being exceedingly high, they are doing all the best they can to keep the wages very low for these writers. While there is a minimum wage that these writers have to be making, the minimum has effectively become the ceiling, meaning that they can't make more than the minimum. Now, there are some exceptions here and there. There are some writers who are doing very well for themselves, but the majority of the writers are not doing so well right now, and that's why it's very important that they go on strike. Now, 
The last time this happened was over a decade ago where they went on strike. The Writers Guild actually went on strike because the media companies, again, were trying to cut them out of videos being streamed on the internet, basically. So they, they won some concessions there after a 100-day strike. So the strike last time lasted a very long time. So what we can expect now is that this is not only going to affect the WGA. No, this is not just a writer's problem. Soon we're going to see that this is affecting actors as well. And not only actors, but directors too. So this is really going to be a whole movie industry-wide thing. So by June 30th, the SAG, which is the... <clears throat> so by June 30th, the SAG, which is the Actors Guild, and the Directors Guild will both be concluding with their negotiations. So if they get what they want from the negotiations, then they'll be able to continue working as is. That doesn't have any effect on the writers' protest because... Their strike is separate from the actors and the directors. However, it's very likely that the actors and directors might join forces with the writers and they might also go on strike as well. Basically what it means when you have the strike is that all work ceases, right? So for the writers right now, that means they're not writing any new scripts. And for some productions, that means that they might be able to continue going on for now because the actors and directors are still employed and they're still able to work. And if they have a script on hand that's already been written, then they're good to go. At least for a while, they can't have any rewrites done or anything like that. But they do have the ability to continue working if they have a script that's already been completed. Now, if you're something like a daytime talk show or a late night talk show, your script is going to be done maybe hours beforehand. You know, sometimes the changes come in that late, but at the very least, they're done pretty close to when the show is going to be aired because they're dealing with contemporary events, they're talking about things that just happened in the news, current relevant jokes, that kind of thing. So these scripts are written very close to when the show is actually recorded and then broadcasted. So these shows that are, you know, late night with Conan O'Brien, like that kind of thing, those are going to stop production immediately. And basically what that means is they're just going to be rolling tape, previously recorded episodes until the strike is over. Now how does that relate to the autograph hobby? Well, if you think about it, a lot of the autographs that we get, whether if it's not from a private signing, they're going to be obtained either through the mail or they're going to be obtained on the street. So one of the big things that street graphers do is they go to these late night shows. They'll go see someone who is in a current movie. They're going on there to promote the movie and they're going to be waiting outside of the building for the person to go up to the talk show and they'll ask for an autograph. So that's why you're able to get a lot of these, like for instance, the Super Mario Brothers movie just came out and you can already go and buy something signed by Jack Black or any of the other actors, you know, Taylor Joy, who were voice actors for the film, and it just came out. Like the day that it premiered, there was already autographs on the market. That's because somebody was going to the premiere. They were getting these photos of the current property that just came out and they have autographs on something that you can buy basically immediately. So it's the same thing for these talk shows where you can get these current autographs from the current property that's out right now. So with the strike being in action right now, the writers right now can't go on there. Now, maybe that's not such a big deal, but like I said, June 30th is the deadline for the Actors Guild, and if they can't come to a deal and they also make it do a strike, then guess what? They're not going to be going to those shows. They're not going to be doing movie premieres. They're not going to be doing the shows. They're not going to go to the Cannes Film Festival or any of these other film festivals. They can't promote their movies at all. So the street graphing is going to basically stop at that point because they're not allowed to promote anything. So that means not going to the shows. But I imagine they probably won't even want to sign anything either because that might be, you know, they might be considered being a scab because they're, it could be construed as promoting the film. So that's some direct. Um, effects of a possible guild if the SAG is involved. Now, now the question is, what other ramifications are there? Now, probably if an actor is going to be appearing at a convention and they're subject to one of these strikes because they're part of the SAG, well, I would say that they're probably not going to be wanting to go to the convention anymore. They're probably going to be canceling convention dates left and right because they're contractually obligated to not promote the movie. So does appearing at a convention, signing autographs for a movie, and uh, talking about a movie in a Q&A panel. Does all that stuff count as promoting a movie? I think that an argument can certainly be made for that. I think they probably would. So if the SAG goes on strike along with the Writers Guild and you know the Directors Guild as well, then I think we're going to see some big effects in the autograph market. You know, that could even impact private signings, conventions, these street graphing, like Basically, everything is going to be affected by it. So it's not just, you know, 
hey, there might not be some new episodes of a TV show coming out or premiere dates might be delayed. This has effects for the autograph community as well. So it's a very big news item to be sure. Now we're gonna move on to covering one of my favorite autograph platforms, Streamily. If you're not familiar with them yet, that's okay. They're only about three years old now at this point. They kind of arose after the pandemic or as part of it due to the fact that conventions were being shut down and autograph collectors really had no place to go. So they kind of moved their operations online, provided a platform for collectors to interact with celebrities via live stream, get autographs signed, that kind of thing. So we're gonna go over what the features of the website are, the kind of different services that they offer, all that good stuff. And we're gonna kind of break down exactly what you can expect when you're gonna shop through Streamily. So let's get into it. Here we have their main page. So here it says autographs live streamed. So that's kind of their main deal, but you can get autographs from them that are already pre-signed or you can do autographs sometimes that are done off of camera as well. So you really gotta make sure that you're checking out exactly what you're buying when you're going into the listing and seeing if you really want it to be signed in front of you on a live stream, that that's what you're actually paying for and not paying for something that's gonna be signed off camera. Streamly offers a wide variety of signers. Could be actors, voice actors, could be people who are in anime, video games, TV, movies. They have a pretty wide gambit. They originally started off with a kind of a core roster of those anime voice actors, maybe some video game voice actors in there. And as time has gone on, they've branched out into some of the more popular actors that you might see at a convention in your town, that kind of stuff. So we're going to see, you know, some of what the we're going to see some of their selection right now. We're going to go into, let's just say, Mei Li here. And uh, as you can see, if you look at this, there's a couple different options. So you really got to pay attention to what you're getting exactly. So the first one, it's signed with a personalized video. So uh, not only will you get it signed, so this is going to be off camera, right? So you're going to get it signed and then she's going to make a personalized video. You're going to get the autograph and then you're going to get a video sent to you as well. So whenever you're doing these, there's a different options depending on if you're doing a live signing or if it's done off camera. But when you're doing either of these, you can get a certificate of authenticity. So this is just a $5 add-on surcharge to your autograph. You just get the, the authenticity sticker on there, which is nice. Five bucks isn't a bad price. That's pretty standard for a convention if you're gonna get something there or even you know cheaper than you might see at a convention. So that's a good price. And they also have the option for a video message. So this is like a new feature, as you can see on their website. And what this is, it's a video message from you. So because you're not going to have the opportunity to interact with a celebrity directly, you're going to have the option to record a message of yourself, you know, saying, hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. I'm a fan because of this X, Y, Z. And then you send it and they get to watch it as they're signing your stuff. So it's a way of like interacting. It's, like, you know, not a direct in-person interaction, but there is some back and forth because you can send them a message that you talk to them, they send you a message back. So there is some interaction there, which is pretty cool. And that's like one of the best things about conventions, I think, is yeah, you're getting the autograph, or you're getting that interaction with the celebrity. And you know, sometimes going to the convention is just not feasible. So this is kind of like second best, I'd say. Kind of makes it more accessible and fun for a lot of people. So uh, two thumbs up for this feature. I think it's really cool and I don't think I've really seen anyone else, any of the other competitors out there offer the same kind of functionality. So it's really cool. Then if you just go to something that's just as signed off camera, you just get the item signed and mailed to you, no video. And then you have the something like this where it's signed on a live stream. And so this is like, you know, you gotta like read the fine print here, right? Because not everything that is signed on a live stream is actually gonna get signed on a live stream, meaning if you order something that says signed on live stream, there's a chance that it'll get signed, but the only people who they really guarantee are gonna get their stuff signed on camera are those who have a VIP or a priority order. So you can do a little upcharge here. It says priority signing, 12 bucks. So you add 12 bucks on top of the price, and then that's gonna make sure that you get your stuff signed on a live stream, which is cool. But I mean, the whole promise of this whole thing is it's autographs, you know, live stream. So the fact that they're adding this surcharge on there to guarantee that it's live streamed, you know, I think that's, that's not the best. I wish it wasn't like that. I wish, you know, if you're going to have your business be about live streaming autographs, you should have every autograph live streamed, at least if you're doing a live signing, because that's 
the promise. But you got to read the fine print here, and you're not guaranteed to get your autograph signed live on the live stream unless you are VIP or priority. So just be mindful of that. And then depending on who the signer is, there might be additional options. We're on the page of Yuri Lowenthal. He's a voice actor. He's in games like Persona. And you can see here that he has an additional option on his profile page. It's audio shout out. So instead of getting a video shout out or a video message, I just get an audio message that's sent to you. So for him, uh, it's $112 to get this. They send it to you in a text message, they say. And uh, you also have the option to do the video message where you're sending him a message. So you can get the shout out as a response to that. So $112, bucks, that's a little a bit, uh, <clears throat> $112, bucks, that's a little bit pricey on, in my, $112 is a little bit pricey in my opinion, but hey, you know, th that's what it is. If you're interested in doing that, then it's an option for you. So at least they have the option. All right, now back to the home page, you're gonna see some other stuff. So you got the live and upcoming up there, which is just the people who are doing live signing right now or have a live signing scheduled. The featured people right here, <clears throat> the featured people right here, they don't necessarily have any live signings at all. So most of these people, you can see these names are probably someone you've recognized from a convention. So what it seems like is they just go to the convention, they get some stuff signed, and it'll tell you where it was signed. Like for instance, if we go to Michael J. Fox, and we go here, he's got a Spin City 8x10 and personalized off camera by Michael J. Fox. This one doesn't say where it was signed. Some of these say, a lot of them say it was signed at Fan Expo. Um, it'll tell you which convention it was, but that's okay. So yeah, all of these ones right here, the featured actors, these are the bigger name celebrities. As far as I can tell, none of these have been done on a live stream. They're all kind of like purchased secondhand at a convention. I mean, I guess firsthand, right, from the celebrity, but they they weren't done through the Streamly service is what I'm trying to say there. So there you go. Then we have popular franchises. So not only can you search for somebody by their specific name, but you can search for them by a franchise. So they do a lot of like franchise specific signings. So they'll have group signings like Genshin Impact is a popular game. So they'll have a whole slew of artists like uh, voice actors from there. And you can sometimes they'll do group live streams where they're doing a live signing. Sometimes uh, you can get the voice actor individually, but they'll have a lot of people like, they'll have like a theme, right? So they'll have a lot of people in the cast do a signing together. And you can also do it by character. So some of these, like Nezuko, if you look at her, it's not just the voice actor that they're doing. It's also like cosplay artist too. So this is Rex Chu, who is doing a Nezuko cosplay here, but it's also Abby Trot, who is the voice actress. So this is just by the character. So if there's multiple people who have, you know, varying relationships with the character, then you can find them all under the character page. So that's another way to search for autographs there. All right. And then we're going to go in, then we're going to go into the pre-signed product. So this is similar to the featured ones where it's already been signed you just go in there it's like an autograph shop that you would see from any of the other autograph stores online you just go in there you buy a pre-signed item and it gets shipped to you you don't have to wait for it to be signed anything like that next up is signed with personalization so that's pretty self-explanatory these ones are not pre-signed you actually have to go in there order it and it gets dedicated to you so you can say i want my, it to be to tim or whatever your name is and uh, you can even potentially request a quote or something like that. So those are all the categories that you have on Streamly, but I want to go a little bit deeper into what they offer. So as you can see, a lot of these photos, uh, they're basically fan art, right? So they do have some like officially licensed photos, but those are more or less few and far between. So odds are what you're gonna get is like one of these fan arts, like something that you would see on DeviantArt, one of these artists who are just uh, making a photo, uh, drawing a picture of their favorite character, which, you know, is cool, but for me, it's not really the look that I like in my collection. So that's kind of like a put off for me, I would say, but some people are perfectly happy to get this kind of art. I prefer the officially licensed photos and stuff. So, um, 
that's always a kind of a turnoff for me. So I, I want to do stuff usually where I can get a photo or something licensed. If they don't have that, then I'll usually just pass and wait to get them at a convention or something else. So that's totally up to you what your taste is. But yeah, there it is. So additional options, they also offer some framing as well. So if you go in here and uh, you look at the, the options here, it depends, I think, okay. Now, Joseph Quinn, if you notice that it does say he did the signing here at Fan Expo Philadelphia and all of the autographs were signed off camera. So he didn't do any kind of live streaming with Streamily. This was all done at a convention. They brought some photos to him and he signed them and now they're available as inventory on the site. So the additional options here would be framing. So of course, when you go in here, you have the option of getting the $5 certificate of authenticity, which is cool, but you also have the option of getting a frame for your print. So if you check out the see more, you can actually see what it is. And it's not like a traditional frame. And I'm not really a fan of this. So as you can see, it is $19 for this frame. And it's basically two pieces of plexi. And the photo is wedged in between those two pieces of plexi. And I don't, I don't know how safe this is for autographs. Like, if this was me, I would not want my autograph in this kind of thing. You never want your autograph to be pressed against the glass because it does have the chance that the ink will separate and be stuck to the glass. It could definitely separate the ink from the photo onto the plexi. So, I mean, really, it's not something that I would recommend. I don't know. I've never had experience with this particular product, so I couldn't say specifically if this is going to destroy your autograph. But if you're paying for something, especially $154, I wouldn't want to pay an extra $19 on top of that to potentially destroy my autograph, right? So if I were you, I would just go on to Etsy. I would get the acid-free mat, acid-free backing, get some UV glass and get, you know, whatever cheap frame you want, upgrade it with those nice archival quality materials. And then you can also get like a good mat to cut out a plaque or whatever on Etsy, all that good stuff. Just do it yourself, save yourself some money or take it to Michael's and, you know, pay a pretty penny, but get it done really good. If, the, if you're paying a good amount of money for the autograph, protect it, make sure that you're taking care of it and not destroying it by displaying it is my advice and my take. But, you know, you paid for it. It's your money. You can do what you want with it. So it's up to you at the end of the day. Thank you so much for joining. This is episode number three. So we have two episodes prior to this one. If you haven't heard them yet, go back and check them out. We've got some great information on there. I'll see you guys again soon.